Ectopic pregnancy. We've recently heard a lot about ectopic pregnancies in the media. We hear people talking about it on social media. We hear politicians talking about it. And there's probably a couple people making decisions about ectopic pregnancy who can't even really describe or diagnose or know the proper treatment for an ectopic pregnancy. So here I am, your friendly Latina OBGYN, here to explain to you exactly what an ectopic pregnancy is. We're gonna talk about exactly how you diagnose it, what the risk factors are, and the actual proper treatment for an ectopic pregnancy. Go figure, from an OBGYN. So grab your favorite drink or coffee and join me. Let's talk about ectopic pregnancies. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Ali, I'm an OBGYN, and in my channel we talk about all things women's health. I share my life, I share vlogs, I share my love for luxury bags, and a ton of fun stuff on my channel. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and become part of this family. Alright, let's jump into the video. What is an ectopic pregnancy? An ectopic pregnancy occurs when a fertilized egg starts to grow outside of the uterus. 90% of ectopic pregnancies actually occur in the fallopian tube. As you can see from this picture, ectopic pregnancies can actually occur in different places. Just remember that 90% of them actually occur in the fallopian tube and 0% of them are located inside of the uterus. Now, picture this pregnancy here that's in the fallopian tube. As that pregnancy starts to grow, it can actually cause that fallopian tube to burst or rupture. Now, a ruptured fallopian tube can actually cause a lot of bleeding very quickly. This is considered a medical emergency because it is life threatening. And the treatment for a ruptured ectopic pregnancy or when that fallopian tube ruptures open, the treatment, it's emergency surgery. Now, as you can see from this picture, because that pregnancy is not located inside of the uterus, there's no room for this pregnancy to grow. So what are the risk factors for an ectopic pregnancy? Can you get an ectopic pregnancy? So right off the bat, if you already have a history of an ectopic pregnancy, you are more likely to have another ectopic pregnancy. Doesn't mean you're going to, but your chance of it happening again is slightly higher than someone that's never had an ectopic pregnancy. For someone who's had prior surgery on their fallopian tube, this can put you at risk for having an ectopic or say you've simply just had a previous pelvic or abdominal surgery. If you have a history of an STI like gonorrhea or chlamydia, this will increase the risk of an ectopic. If you've had pelvic inflammatory disease, or if you have endometriosis. Now, if you group together everything I've mentioned as a risk factor, they all share one thing in common. All of these situations can actually cause scarring in the fallopian tube. And that scarring in the fallopian tube can then lead to an ectopic pregnancy because the pregnancy gets stuck in the tube. Other risk factors for ectopic pregnancy are things like smoking cigarettes, women who struggle with infertility or have to undergo IVF, and women above the age of 35. So what are the symptoms of an ectopic pregnancy? At first, you might have some of the same symptoms of an early pregnancy. The tender breast, being very tired, a missed period, upset stomach, nausea, vomiting, you get where I'm going. But for an ectopic pregnancy, you might also start to get abnormal bleeding, low back pain, pelvic pain, especially pain in your pelvis, either on your right or left side. Honestly, in medical school, they always teach us, if a woman comes into the emergency department with abdominal pain and vaginal bleeding, you should treat that person as if she has an ectopic pregnancy until proven otherwise. As the ectopic pregnancy starts to grow and maybe even that tube ruptures, symptoms change. You may start to get sudden onset severe abdominal pain. You might get shoulder pain. You might start to feel weak and dizzy. That's due to losing a lot of blood very quickly. You might also faint. Obviously, if you're experiencing these symptoms or know someone that's going through this and they're having these symptoms, you need to take them to the ER now. So how do we diagnose an ectopic pregnancy? The most common way is gonna be by ultrasound, but you also wanna make sure and do blood work to check for pregnancy hormone levels, and you wanna make sure and do a pelvic exam as well. So let's talk about treatment of an ectopic pregnancy. Let me make one very clear point. An ectopic pregnancy cannot be simply removed from the fallopian tube or removed from whatever location it is. It cannot be implanted inside of the uterus. That is not how this goes. That pregnancy, you can't just unplant it and plant it somewhere else. This is not a normally developing pregnancy. Again, you can't just pick it up and plant it somewhere else and hope it's just gonna grow. So knowing that information, ectopic pregnancies 
always need to have treatment. And there are two methods of treatment. One is gonna be with medication, and this is typically going to be a medication called methotrexate. And the second form of treatment is going to be surgery. Now deciding what treatment is gonna be best for you is going to depend on a couple different things. Now deciding what treatment is going to be best for you is gonna depend on a couple things like the location of the ectopic pregnancy and the size. Your doctor is gonna go over what they recommend or what would be appropriate in your scenario. Quickly, I wanna talk about methotrexate or the medication treatment for ectopics. The mechanism of action of methotrexate is to stop cells from growing. So methotrexate is also used to treat some forms of cancer. After taking methotrexate, the pregnancy is then absorbed by your body in about four to six weeks. Methotrexate does not require removal of the fallopian tube, whereas a surgery may require us to remove the fallopian tube to stop the bleeding. But methotrexate may not be the best option for you, also depending on your medical history. Some people just aren't candidates to take it. Now typically this surgery is done laparoscopically or minimally invasive with the use of a couple small incisions on your abdomen where we're able to put a camera into your abdomen and do the surgery with instruments and the use of that camera. Now if we run into a lot of bleeding or the patient is really unstable and we can't see because of all the bleeding, we may then need to make a laparotomy or actually make a big incision on the abdomen to get inside and stop the bleeding. Sometimes this surgery doesn't require removal of the fallopian tube and we're able to just remove the pregnancy itself but it really depends on the location of the ectopic and how the bleeding is and of course if the patient is stable or not now to wrap things up remember that having an ectopic pregnancy is a traumatic experience it's not just traumatic to your body but it's also traumatic to you as a person on your mental health at the end of the day an ectopic pregnancy is a pregnancy and it is a loss so if this was a desired or wanted pregnancy this can be extremely difficult news. Obviously your body's been through a lot, so your body can also go into shock and just the recovery of it, it can take a while and that's okay. You need time to let your body heal from this, but also you need your mental health to heal from this trauma. So if you've had an ectopic pregnancy and you seem to be really struggling or you need to talk to someone, please get some help. Maybe reach out to your doctor, maybe go see a therapist, reach out to friends and family or someone you can rely and trust on. I hope you all found this video very helpful. I tried to keep it short and to the point. I'm gonna leave linked here another video for you all to watch all about miscarriages in case you're currently going through a miscarriage or you know someone that's had a miscarriage. I think this video is going to be really helpful. I hope you guys check it out and enjoy it. All right, everybody, I hope you have an amazing day. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all of the support. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.